Now, when you're learning a new programming language, the first thing that people teach you is the Hello World example. But in the case of Arduino and ESP32s, that is blinking an LED light. Now, luckily, most ESP32 development boards have a built-in LED, so you don't need to hook up an external one. The built-in LED can be used to indicate a status, for example, like blink twice while it is connecting to Wi-Fi. So let's blink the LED. Here I've opened up an empty Arduino project and it already contains two functions, the setup function and the loop function. The setup function is only called once, right after the ESP32 has started. The loop function, on the other hand, will be repeated endlessly as fast as the ESP32 can handle it. In the setup function, we want to set up the built-in LED so that we can turn it on or off. To do that, we're going to use pin mode. And this function takes two parameters, the pin which you want to configure and then how you want to use it. Now, in this case, the pin number is predefined in the Arduino framework and it's called LED underscore built-in. The second parameter and then we're going to set the second parameter to output because we want to control the LED. Now the setup function and our pin mode function will make sure that we can turn the built-in LED on or off. But now we have to do it. And we're going to do that in the loop function because I want to endlessly turn it on and then turn it back off. We're going to start by turning the LED off. I'm going to say digital right LED underscore built-in. And we're going to write hi to this pin. Then after the LED is turned off, we're going to wait for, let's say, half a second. And we can do that with the delay function. And the delay function takes one parameter, which is the amount of milliseconds that your program has to wait before it can continue. So 500 milliseconds equals half a second. After this, we can turn the LED on. So we're going to say digital rights, LED built in. And then we're going to set the pin to low. Once that's done, we're going to wait another half a second. And that's our loop function. This will be executed endlessly for as long as the ESP32 is powered on. One side note though, it might be possible that LED built in is not correctly defined for your board and that the LED doesn't blink. If that happens, try locating the datasheet for your ESP32 board and find out which pin the LED is attached to. This is the pinout of my ESP32 board. And you can see here that LED built in is attached to GPIO 22. In other words, to pin number 22. So if your LED is not blinking and you find the data sheet and you find the correct pin, then you can overwrite the LED built in with another pin number. So I'm going to add some lines to the top of my sketch and I'm going to say define LED built in and then a pin number. So in my case, it's 22. So this will redefine LED built in and it will make sure that it will work for your board. All right. So before we can flash this, we have to save this sketch. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and then we have to select which board we want to flash this program onto. So I'm going to go to tools. I'm going to go to board and then here I'm going to scroll and you have to select one of these ESP32 boards. And as you can see, there are many variants available. Now, one of the most common ones or the most compatible one is this one, Dwat ESP32 DevKit V1. If you can't find your board in this list, then try picking this one and seeing if it works. Now, in my case, I have the Lowland 32, so I'm going to pick that one, Waymos Lowland 32. Now, one more thing to check before you can flash this onto your board, and that is that the correct port is selected in the Arduino IDE. Go to tools and find the port item. Now, in here, you will see all the serial ports that are available on your system. Now, in my case, I'm using a USB interface, and you can see that there are two interfaces attached to my machine. Now, in my case, I know that it's the last interface that I should pick, but in your case, you just have to try. So I'm going to pick the last one and to upload the sketch to my ESP32 board, I'm going to click on this upload arrow. This will compile our code and it will then transfer it to the ESP32. 
And voila, if I open up the log, you can see it has written some data to the board and that it then reset the board via the RTS pin. And if I take my camera here, you can see that the ESP32 is blinking its built-in LED. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and check out the rest of this series if you want to learn more about Arduino and the ESP32.